Miss Diane, give me a sound check, please. We have any sound? Hello? How is sound? Sound check. All right, I'm hearing myself, so I'm going to go ahead and press. Let me, uh, Turn the other sound down. Okay, thank you for holding on while I got that. I tried to use a different mic. I watched a video last night that was very concerning to me. By the way, thank you guys for being here an hour later, a little bit early, no notice stream. I've been out of pocket for a couple of days. But I watched a video last night of a guy that's been driving for two, three, four years talking about just how bad truck driving was his first year and a half. I don't know. I don't. I, I do know why people fail out here. I do know why people don't make good money. I do. I do understand that. But I watch videos like that, and I understand why people either don't come in the business or they come in the business and they leave because of stuff like this that this guy was saying. This business that I believe. Let me put a few of you folks up too while I'm while I'm moving through this. Bear with me one second. I, I blew by that. I forgot I have this. I have this technology. Nathan Frank, what's going on? Chad Burgesson, what's going on? Let me uh, make this minimal. Appreciate you guys being here. But I watched the stream and it really bothered me. Like it bothered me that people are out here telling new drivers that I didn't have enough money to eat. I did, you know, that I was only making four or five hundred bucks a, a week. Um, I just, if you're with a bad company, I understand that. But if you're with a bad company, get your three months and bounce. Get your three months and bounce. Perry B, what's going on? Don't stay with the company who's not getting you the miles, getting you the pay. And let me say this, unless you've had the company pay your own way through CDL school, a lot of these companies out here, I'm about to show you, a lot of these companies out here, even for a brand new driver, are starting 40, 45 cents plus, plus. But there's so much. Here's the other thing, too. Most of the folks on my channel, the bell on my channel a long time. Uh, Michael Ray, what's going on? Uh, you hear me now, Diane? We got good sound now? Okay, if you said here, you're down here. Um, you guys, you guys know I talked about the first two years. I was kind of stuck with GNP. I had to sit tight the second year. I was about to bounce to the oil field. But I, I had to hold off 65000 a year, not great money, not for me. I wasn't liking it, but I enjoyed the job and I saw the money trail, but I couldn't, I couldn't go start chasing that money trail until I got done with the business stuff we had going on the full, almost a whole second year of my truck driving time. I was driving nights for GNP. It was home daily, even though it's, you know, not always the best thing to drive to and from work if it's an hour and a half round trip on top of this shift I was driving. But even then at 65,000, I knew this business was a hundred K gig. I knew this business. Let me, let me say it differently. So I don't, I don't, you know, hurt people's feelings. I knew this business. If you have no concerns about hustling and you're able to work and you're able to perform, let's just say 75,000 plus 
75 G's is a lot of money for a lot of people. $75,000, period. Do you have to get through the first three, six, eight, nine, 12 months? Yeah, it depends on you. Depends on where your maturity level is. I don't know what people... I don't, I don't know what people's limitations are. I mean, I can look at your personality profile when you do a coaching call. You can look perfect on paper. You can still come out here and fail and auger into the ground. This business is, a, is this business will chew you up. And all the people in the comments now, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. This business will chew you up if you don't have any emotional maturity, if you don't have any True work ethic, because when I hear people talk about they they have they have a nine to five job with weekends off. You know, you've all seen the meme. Oh, you work part time. But I've been that dude that's always had like even when I was in the military. When I was enlisted in, in Germany after the first two years I was there because I had a car because I wanted to have a car be able to go do trips on weekends and everything else. I had a second job like I would work all night and then I would I had a second job. That's what I've always done. When I was getting my degree, I had to work full time in the in the Air Force and then go to full time night school. I got my degree in four years, even though it was you know night school. I got it in four years. That was a that was a heavy schedule. When I got out of the when I got out of the enlisted ranks, went to the officer ranks. I flew all the time. If I was flying, if I wasn't flying, I was working out because I was training for triathlons, and I was and I was going to get my master's degree when I was back at the base. But I've always been that cat, like the, the main job was never just the gig. You know, the main job was, well, now I'm, I'm done working my, in the military, our flying job. When we were in the air, we were in the air for 17, 20 hours at a time. We, we weren't operational that whole time. Take off, landing, different things we had going on during the mission. I can't, I can't say much more than that. But we were, we were, actually, it's probably longer than that because you include the pre-brief and the debrief, you know. 18, 19, 20 hours in Saudi was more than that. I don't understand people that say they want to make good money. I was telling a coaching call client this last night. I don't understand people that say they want to make good money. Like, let's just say to you, good money is 75, 80,000 a year. You say you want to make good money, but you still want to have weekends off, nights off. You want to have every vacation day, every, every holiday off. You have things. I get it. I get it. Well, this is the wrong business for you. If you want to come out here and make good money, now, if you want to make, and I'm going to show you some things here on, online in just a minute. If you want to come out and you want to make 45 to 55, you can do that locally. You can be home locally and make 45 to 55. I'm not sure, Michael, Cl Michael Clymer, what's, Clymer, what's going on? I'm not sure I would want to be in a local gig, driving local driving, fighting city traffic just to be able to be home every night. Wouldn't fit me. I wouldn't like the income and I wouldn't like, the traffic, the local traffic. Like I love driving nights. I love driving nights and being completely able to just run and the wheels are turning. I rarely get caught in traffic. This last eight months was even better because I, I, it sounds bad, but it was, it was better. Like that first three months during the shutdown, shoot. You talk about having no traffic on the roads at all, other than the popo. That was the fact. It was kind of like, what was that movie? Will Smith Miss legend it was kind of like legend like nobody was on the roads it was freaky but you can come out here and you can just make 45 55 thousand and have a average income in trucking if that's what you want if you want to do 75 plus the money's out here even with one year's experience or less the money is out here in the business i promise you that alan alan patty you're about to leave fedex to go to dh is it dhe or dhl You've had your CDL for 14 months and you're progressing and finding better work. Listen, and, and you know, FedEx might not be the gig for you. UPS might not be the gig for you. Mail service might not be the gig. You know, the, the LTL I'm doing, I'm going to sit tight until we get through this election, until we get off through all this BS. I'm sitting tight. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking anywhere. I pay attention to all this stuff, but I'm not looking anywhere. Ever since this thing broke out in March, even though I think I had it in January. If you guys go back and watch the videos when I was doing the off-road diesel up in Idaho, I think I got it because I flew back out to the to Idaho. I took a Christmas break, flew back out to Idaho, and I was sick as a dog for a, a week. And it left me and then came back on me. But there's money out here. Uh, Mark B., 
you rip the bumper cover off your delivery van, get out and look. Yep. But I, I get I get tired of the folks that I see talking to new drivers. All you can tell me, if you have no life experience, if you have no business experience, if you have no work ethic other than a $10 an hour work mindset, how are you going to show somebody else how to get to 75, 85, 100,000 plus a year? You don't need to be a lease or owner operator to do that. Matter of fact, there are many lease drivers in the CDL 18 wheel, big rig truck driving gang. Go smash the like button just for that. There are many lease operators that are making less than company drivers are making because they bought in to the lie. You're going to be an owner operator, be able to call your own shots. I wouldn't drive Uber for some of the rates these folks are pulling an 18 wheeler for the wheels on their, their tractor and the other wheels on the trailer. And sometimes they're responsible for both. They're not doing power only. I wouldn't do that. I would have zero interest. I would tell all of you folks that are, you know, coming out to any kind of thing in the business world, but especially trucking, you want to be an owner operator or a lease operator and you have no business experience. Do this. Here's a tip. Here's a free coaching call right now. And this isn't meant to, to be harsh at all. Do this though. Just go get some business cards made. Make up a make up a, a, a business name. Go get some business cards made and consider yourself a business person. But for the love of God, if you have no business experience and you have no real understanding of a work ethic past a 40 hour a week, $10 an hour job or $8 an hour job, and you jump into that side of the business, you are probably more so than not going to get chewed up and spit out. And if you have bad credit or no credit, magnify that a hundredfold. Because you, ha if you have bad credit or no credit, you're at the company's mercy if you're leased on with them about the problems you have with that tractor or the trailer as well. You're at their mercy. And for the love of God, why? Like, I, here's what I do when I when I ran car dealerships, and it's what happens when you become a student of the game that you're in. When I ran car dealerships, as I'm sitting at lights or I have people pass me on the interstate, I would appraise their car. I would visually look at their car and go, that's a you know Toyota Camry, that's a Mercedes Benz, that's a, and I would put a number in my head from the year you could, you know, you, when you're in the business every day, you kind of get to know the stuff. And I would look at these cars and go, that's worth probably this much, that's worth this much. Now you don't know the mileage, but you're looking at the car, the general condition, go, ah, that's about worth, it's just, it starts happening like that once you become a student of the game. When you come out, when I came out to truck driving, I did the same thing. Like I know what a lot of these companies pay. And when I see a truck, like I was, I was fueling last night. Um, and when I pulled out the very first truck I saw was, a, was a, I shouldn't say the company name. That'd be hurtful. I looked at the company name on the truck and I thought, okay, they get paid a dollar 36 cents a mile, including fuel surcharge. They're probably, that driver's probably bought the dream of being an owner operator, probably making 65,000 on a, on a really, really good year, maybe 70, 75, but you're responsible for everything that goes wrong. You have no benefits. And you, and I'm like, why would you do that? If you can be a company driver and make 75,000, why would you take the risk? But again, people buy the dream. Just go buy some business cards. Call yourself, you know, the Gator person and just have a business card and feel good about yourself. But don't, for the love of God, don't jump into a tractor trailer and lease it with no business experience, no work ethic, no understanding of people skills, and then you get mad. Like, I wonder after this last shutdown, I wonder how many people had their trucks go back and get repossessed. Now, a lot of the, a lot of the lease companies, including companies, a lot of them waived the payments. They had to. They would have taken trucks back in thousands across the nation had they not done that. But that should have been a wake up call to so many people when they saw the rates go through the floor, which they're about to do again. You heard it here first. When the rates went through the floor and all these all this capacity was out there that wasn't being used and the rates are down to 80 cents a mile. And there's drivers out there that have a seven hundred, six hundred dollar a week truck payment. If you have bad credit and you go jump into a tractor trailer lease on your own and you have no real money in the bank and no lines of credit, you need to go put your head between a door and slam it against it before you go do that again. That's a horrible decision. If I was talking to anybody in this business world that came out here to take 
a tractor trailer lease and you had zero business experience and you had bad credit or no credit and you had no lines of credit and you're about to go do that, I would, I would literally, if you were a family member, I would sit you down and I would try to talk some smack into your brain because that's the quickest way to go broke in life. It only takes you about three months to go broke and have it affect your credit. And then it affects your credit. Then it affects your family. Then it affects your finances. And it affects, it affects, it affects. It affects what you pay for cars, what you pay for rent. Sometimes you can't even rent the place because of your credit. You're better off being a company driver until you get a feel for the business, number one. I'm going to show you some things online here in just a minute. Um, Philly Josh, you got your collagen? So do, uh, so do I. I got two ready for tonight. Because when I get up, after I get up and get situated, I have two that are already made. They're just cold, but I, I still drink them that way to start my night off. But let's get back to this. But I watch this guy's video, and I'm thinking about all the people out there that are thinking, you know, I, I'm, I hear truck driving is good money. I hear Red talk about how good a money you can make. Well, you can, but you can't if you're not teachable, coachable, and have a little bit of motivation. If you want to be like every other truck driver who comes out here and stumbles and fumbles and fails for 8, 10, 12, 15 years, I shouldn't say fail, but you like they just keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over. You can. You can join that club. It's a big club, and they're looking for more participants. I just don't have any interest. You know, I can't share a lot right now because I haven't gotten the letter from my ex-wife's attorney that we're totally settled and clean for our, what I owe her. But we have, the blonde Viking wife and I have, have built a, a base that I can't even tell you is probably the best base that I've had in my whole life because we're debt free except for our car in our, in our house. We're debt free. That's a great place. And we make really good money. It's a great place to be. We have lines of credit. We have a paid off rental property. Paid off. Paid off rental property. I don't say it to brag. I say it because this last, and I went from a, a 485 beacon in 2012 back to an 815 now. And she's at a 780, 790 now. Just since 2012, eight years. And some people are like, well, they come out here and they make bad business decisions. They get their credit jacked up. They start going broke. They have a family at the house. That's the other thing, too. You've got to manage your risk. Why are you out here taking big risks if you have babies at the house to take care of? Why are you doing that? Why would you do that? Why would you think you're going to come out here and, and, and lease a tractor trailer with no business experience and you have babies to feed or you have a wife or a husband to feed? But you're thinking, well, I'll make more doing that. And I don't think so. I really don't think so. Especially if you're with a company that's leasing you a tractor trailer or they're leasing you the tractor, you're pulling their, their trailers and you're running for a dollar ten, dollar twenty, dollar thirty, dollar, even a dollar fifty a mile. It's kind of the base for me. Like I wouldn't even talk, I wouldn't even cough at you for a dollar fifty, you know, at all. But people are out here doing it and then they wonder why they start augering into the ground, especially in the last seven, eight months. Now it's going really well right now on the load boards. Check with me. Let me put a few more up. Check with me in about three months. Check with me in three months. But let me show you some things on this on this, this stream. Let me show you this. If you pop up, just pop up when you look. Bang a bang a boom. Let's just look at this. Let's just look at this. Let me make sure the screen's showing. Let me uh, I'm gonna make this large screen for you. So bear with me. Let me make it larger print. Let me slide it over so you can see it better. CDL driver jobs in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Now, for a lot of you folks that have any kind of a hustle, that what do they call these? The, the industrial athletes. Here's an, and this is, this is a sponsored ad. You see that here. McLean's $75,000 average first year. Let me tell you about McLean's. Can you make that kind of money? Absolutely, you can make that kind of money with McLean's. I've done many coaching calls with people that went to McLean's or went to a food service distribution company like McLean's and made 65, 75, 85 their first year, but they worked their butts off. You're up and down out of that truck. You know, sometimes you have two people on the route with you, not you and somebody else all the time, which could be good for you, but you're up and out of that truck all the time. I've had people from coaching calls that went and did that straight away. Straight away, talked about losing 40, 50 pounds in the first three months because they were working that much, that hard compared to 
a sedentary sitting motion, you know, drive and driver, reefer driver, bump a dock and, and lay up in the sleeper for two, three, seven, 12 hours to get unloaded or loaded. It's not that way with McLean's. You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. Sometimes 15, 20 stops or more or less, you know, is that, is that real money they're talking about? Absolutely. It is. Let me make this large screen again. I mean, give me one second right there. Large screen again. Then I'm just going down an ad. I just, I just searched for CDL driver jobs, Atlanta, Georgia. U.S. Express don't know about that. UPS is hiring. UPS is now hiring. That's how busy these boys are. FedEx is hiring. Okay. Let's go down here, though. This is what I want to show you. Let's scroll down through some of these, but I want to get to these questions. All right. Let me get, all right. All right. How much do oil field CDL drivers make? Because I was looking at this before I popped the stream up. Fuel truck drivers in 2016. Why do I care about 2016? We're four years removed from 2016. I don't care about 2016, but it's good to look at. It says right here, average crude oil fuel truck drivers, thirty dollars to $60,000. I'm sorry. Fuel truck drivers just in general were thirty to sixty. Average crude oil drivers, seventy-four. I will tell you from the time I spent pulling crude oil, that number, you must be taking two, three days off a week. Okay. You must be. When I was doing crude oil, I made really, really, really good money. 74, 75. Like, why would you go to the oil field and be out in the middle of nowhere doing that kind of work? It's very dirty work, not quite as dirty as sand, but it's very dirty. You're in the middle of nowhere. You're having to battle the wolves and the coyotes and the and the the, the buzzards fly over you when they think you're going to drop and, and they're going to be able to eat you. It's just a really like if, if, especially if you drive nights, you're out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. Why would you go do that for seventy five thousand a year? I wouldn't. I would have never gone to the oil field to make seventy five thousand. And crude oil pays really really well. Let's get back to this. Let me make it large screen again just for this this while we go through this. Okay. How much do local city CDL drivers make? I always look at this to see what people are, you know, what they're seeing online when they look. Now, is this probably correct? Local truck driver salaries. I love, you know, they call it salaries. This isn't a salary. This this is a commission. Let me make this large screen so you can you can see my face. This is a commission job. That's what CDL 18 wheel big rig truck. It's a commission based job. If you are looking for a salary position, you can go work hourly for some of these companies. You're kind of capped. You're kind of limited. You find the right gig and you find and you have the right kind of hustle. You can you can do very well. Let me see what people are saying real quick. Rafael Alvarado. Ignorance is bliss. I agree. Um, Michael, Mike Klamer, you approached your CDL driving job as it, you were uh, rolling your franchise or you had a rolling franchise. That's it. Yeah. And you're right. Dahu Han, Atlanta. Like I wouldn't, I would not want to be a CDL driver in Atlanta. Wouldn't want it. Let me make this larger screen again, just for a second. Let's look at this. Let's look at this missing. Some of it's misinformation. Some of it's not. Local truck driver salaries, U.S. Express, 53000 Holland, local truck driver, 57. Just, I'm going to round it up to 57. Hub Group, let me tell you, the, one of the, the young lady I was going to try and have on this weekend, and I, and I, I failed miserably at that Sunday. I'm going to try and get her back on this week. Um, she's driving for Hub Group. She's doing very, very well. Doing very, very well. She's doing well above $18 an hour. NFI is who bought GNP. 19 bucks an hour. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to work for that. I have no interest, no interest. How much do local drivers make in Georgia? Let me make sure you guys can see this. Yep. You see this. How much do local drivers make in Georgia? 35,000 to 46,000 monthly 29 to 38. I would say the high end of both of those probably isn't far off. Okay probably isn't far off. Here's another question. Do truck drivers make $100,000? You might not be able to make $100,000 off the bat. I like how they say that. But given the truck driver demand with experience, specialization, and the right company, you can make $80,000 plus. Yes, you can. And you don't need to be a lease operator to do that. You do not. Let's see what this question's answer is, because I like looking at this to see how, how close they are to correctness. Asmat, um, 
it's not giving me a button to push on to open that up. Tanker endorsement earned about 70 a year. That's not far off. If you're pulling fuel locally, that's not far off. I just don't have any interest in being like for me, I don't have any interest in being part of a candlestick with uh, gasoline close to it. I don't have any interest in that. I thought I was going to when I came back. Don't have any interest. The more I thought about it, I'm like, nope, nope. Can you get rich driving trucks? This is an amazing question. At this rate, one can become a millionaire in 40 years driving a truck. You're better off putting $8,300 in a, an ETF, which is a stock market term. Google it. And letting that thing ride for 30 years and you'll be a millionaire and never touch that money. Okay? Somebody can retire at 59 years old with $1 million in, in stocks at this rate. Oh, see, they actually said that. <laughs> you can retire with money in stocks. Okay, so they're saying you can't become a millionaire by being a trucker, but if you make the right investments, you can. Um, is getting your CDL worth it? I love looking at these things. Is it worth it? Here's, here's my answer to that. Let me get myself larger on screen. Here's my answer to that. It depends on what you consider worth it. Like, I, you know, I, I see people talk about how they come out into trucking. They're not making any money like this cat was talking about. Uh, make, you know, some, some, he said some days he couldn't even eat. Like, I don't know what you eat. Like when I, when people told me they spend 60, 70 bucks at a travel center for one meal or two meals, what are you eating? Like my, my top end is like $10. And that was even when I was working for GNP, 10 bucks per meal. At the, and that's a high end. I would try to keep it down to 20 bucks or less per day, but I'm just not, I'm not that guy that's just going to keep eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating. You know, I wanted to try and stay in some semblance of shape because you'll get away from yourself out here. I don't understand that. Let me get back to large screen again just for a second. Ten reasons. Let's see, let's see what this one is. How much do Walmart drivers? Are here? I, I didn't, even talk, didn't even talk about this. This is correct information. Walmart drivers are some of the best paid or have been. I don't know about now, but they have been some of the best pay in the, in the business. And they have good benefits. How long will that last? I don't know because we all know that Walmart, UPS, FedEx, all these major companies, Amazon, they're looking at the self-driving technology. Is that going to come around in the next two, three years? No, not in a large scale. But is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. That's what all this 5G is for, to link everything together. It's what all this is for. Um, let me also show you, for the folks that have at least a year's experience, number one, I've always told you, always get every endorsement. Always get every endorsement. You're a company driver, Michael Ray. You mow lawns, Perry B. You could have a good gig, man. I know a lot of people that had their own lawn business that are making $100,000 plus. It's not a bad gig. Let me show you this one. Let me stop sharing that screen because you can do your own research on that. Let me share this screen. With, with a year to two years experience, you can go out to the oil fields and haul sand right away. It's picking back up, by the way. Okay? Picking back up. Oil fields are starting to pick back up. I'm seeing a lot of posts. Crude Oil Haulers Network on, on uh, Facebook. Come on, get off there. Let me show you some of these posts just in the last couple of days. This was 14 hours ago. Looking for crude oil drivers in West Texas and South Texas. Also owner operators in Louisiana coming up in November. All right. Um. A is based on experience, no night positions yet. So they're they're starting a new lease is what they're doing. Cheyenne Davis here, I'm giving these people some free advertising. They're hiring crude oil haulers, company and owner operators, and they have their own trailers, so they'll lease trailers if you have a, a truck with the PTO. Carlsbad, Hobbs, Orla, and Pecos. This is 16 hours old. That's good news. That's good news. Very good news. If you guys call them, tell them Red, Red sent you. Um, this guy is selling the truck. Go back to this. This is uh, October 18th. What is today? The 21st. Big Springs, Texas. That's right there uh, close to... Uh, what am I thinking of? What's the name of that city? Uh, Odessa. Close to Odessa, Midland. Big Springs. Two years, tank, two years CDL. Tanker hazmat. Like I've always said, they'll get every endorsement. No experience needed will train. 1099 position. Get a good accountant. Quit, quit listening to these truck stop lawyers talking about don't work 1099. Get a good accountant. 
This is October 16th. Seminole, Oklahoma. Two years experience as a CDL driver is what this means, I'm sure. Okay. A lot of these companies, like when I went to haul crude, I didn't have any experience hauling crude. I called the guy and he said, listen, I just, I just lost a driver. If you get out here within 72 hours, I'm going to, I'm going to train you. I got, I got in the DILF fan and I took off. I made a lot of money. I, d- I did very, and I wasn't responsible for Jack except my food. You know, what I didn't like is as much money as I made him when the truck was in the shop, like, you know, the next day I couldn't run and I had to let the, leave the truck in the shop. I didn't like that. He made me pay my own hotel. He paid for my hotel the first day. And then, cause I was making such good money. He's like, well, just pay your own room. I'm like, yeah, but I'm supposed to be working. I'm, it's your truck. I didn't argue with him cause I was making really, really, really good money. I didn't like that though. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not working today because of your truck. Not because of me. I'm like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to run. Ready to run. Isn't that a Dixie chick song? Ready to run. So, but I made so much money doing crude and off-road diesel. There was no complaints. Was it, was it a different type of gig? Yeah. I don't know that a lot of people would go do that because it was such a different gig. Like you're in the hauling sand was one thing. Cause like the sand trucks, you were always normally in line with two or three or four, or 10 trucks, 20 trucks, no matter what time of the day. Crude wasn't that way. When I ran crude at night, I would be the only truck I would see from about 10 o'clock at night till about four in the morning. I'd be the only truck in and out of those wells. I would, ma- I would sometimes see another driver, but I rarely did. Like I was from the time I left the main road and got on the lease roads, went to the, to the tank and picked up and then came back. I, I didn't see another truck. And then you lose cell signal two, three miles in because there's the cell towers aren't close by because of the plane earth. And, uh, it was, it was one of those gigs that you either had to have the confidence to be out there doing that because you are literally by yourself in the middle of nowhere. And it was freaky sometimes. You'd be out there, especially if it was raining, you really couldn't see and it was dark. Be out there 20 miles off the main road, you know, 30 feet up in the air, pulling crude oil, you know, gauging it, testing it, offloading it. But it paid really well. So everything was a trade-off. It paid really, really well. Really well. Like I made I made as much doing crude oil and off-road diesel as I made some months running dealerships on the on the low end of running dealerships. And that was just a one man gig. I wasn't responsible for inventory. I wasn't responsible for advertising. I wasn't responsible for Jack, except red Viking, my runs, my paperwork and my bills. That was it. And fighting the wolves off because they they were a little bit pesty sometimes. Um, But Walmart drivers get paid really, really well. I think they want it. I think they want a year's experience, I believe. And a lot of cities like in Charlotte, there are no positions for Walmart drivers in Charlotte. They're, they're, they're snatched up kind of like UPS. UPS is hiring now probably because of the season. FedEx is the same. The postal service is the same. Now the postal service is a government gig. If you can get on that thing full time as a government employee, you get some benefits from, you know, retirement. Um, where do truck drivers get paid the most? Let's see what this says. Mississippi. What are they talking about? Willis Wyoming. I began pulling crude oil in Wyoming when I went, when I went to pull crude oil, I pulled crude oil in Wyoming, beautiful state, beautiful people. Some of the most wholesome scenery you'll ever see. The wolves are huge. And I made a lot more than $61,000 doing crude oil in Wyoming, but the, the mountains, when you, when you drive them, the Scottish Tommy trucker told me this because he and I talked about that gig before I went and did it. Cause he had run crew. He had run a, oil field work up in uh, North Dakota, like, like uh, tanker monkey does Chris Kennedy. And he had come down to Texas. He had also, I think, I think Scottish Tommy trucker said he did a little bit of the Wyoming is, you know, six, six, 7,000 feet in the air. Some of those mountains. I, I didn't know that I would have a blizzard at the end of May. I had no idea. Like I got out there the middle of May, I began running uh, nights right away, which is what I always do. Uh, in that case, it was idiotic. But I've never been one to be scared. I would be out in those lease roads up and down mountains with, you know, 110,000 pounds on my back. And you had a, a foot of visibility. You couldn't even see out the windshield. And I'm like, you know, my, I, I need to go back to driving days for a while because I got stuck once or twice. Had to wait for the, 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 their, uh, their backhoe to come in the morning and pull me out, you know, because I wasn't chained up because I didn't realize it was going to be snowing at 6,000 feet in the, in the middle end of May in Wyoming. 
it was crazy stuff, but I got paid real well. Um, and I had a great learning curve. Chris Gagnon's about the effort you give and the decisions you make. I agree. I agree. Let me see what uh, Wes Cross says. I'm going to be doing dedicated route for Walmart. It's good pay. All the people I've talked to that do Walmart are very happy and they make good money. That's what I've heard. Um, let's get back to this. What am I showing you? Which screen am I on? I am on bing-a-bang-a-boom. Let me make this large screen so I can tell what screen I'm on. Crude Oil Haulers Network. Okay. Let me get back up to this. If you see these companies, you can go on Facebook. You can go on Facebook and just Google, like here in the in the search bar, just put in CDL driver jobs. Face, I need to start doing this more. Facebook, Craigslist, Indeed.com. They're all great resources. Okay. Luis Juarez. Crude oil driver in South Texas. Now, I will tell you, South Texas, when I was out in South Texas, everybody I spoke to said South Texas wells were a lot sketchier and a little bit slower than the West Texas wells. I don't know about Louisiana, don't know about Oklahoma. I did an interview with a guy on the channel two and a half years ago, three years ago, that ran sand in Oklahoma. I know the Oklahoma area because I was stationed at, at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City when I flew on the AWACS, but Oklahoma was coming on strong. Here's what's happening right now, though. People are starting to pick back up because this is the quarter where they start picking back up. But the election's happening in less than 15 days. A lot can change. Because don't forget, please don't forget this. There's a party running for election that told us all you can keep your doctor. We saw how that worked out. That same party is saying we're not going to ban fracking, even though they said last six months ago they were going to ban fracking. If they get elected, North Dakota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, um, some portions of, uh, well, Wyoming, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, see how long that lasts. Because again, you can keep your own doctor. All right. See how that lasts. Sean Bippy, what's going on, sir? Um, this is what I do though. Like I stopped to do this this morning. I was just looking through, see what, see what's rolling. And I thought, you know what, let me, let me do a stream about this. Cause I'm looking at these gigs thinking, well, it's not, might not be a bad gig. If somebody's looking for the, looking for a job. Now let me, let me share this screen. This is a, this is a, this next one is Craigslist. All I did was did a basic search for Craigslist. Okay. Let me share this screen. Let's see what we find on Craigslist for CDL 18 wheel big rig truck drivers. By the way, walk over and smash the like or the dislike button with your Viking or your werewolf paw. That'd be nice. I'd like that. Um, okay, this is West Virginia, just CDL jobs. That's all I searched for. West Virginia. Team drivers, 60 cents, 66 cents, all miles. Someone sent me an email this week. They were driving team. Three months in the business, 40 cents a mile split. I'm like, and they paid their own CDL. Like they didn't, they didn't use this company to get their CDL. Get on these sites and look because you're being, you're being, I'm not going to say robbed. That is a very strong term if I say you're being robbed blind. If you're running team and you're running for 40 cents a mile split between two people, Get on Craigslist, get on Indeed, get on Facebook, type in CDL team driver jobs, comma, put in whatever zip code you're near, comma, and then put in, like on the Google search, put in Craigslist or put in Facebook or put in Indeed, the results will pop up. Some of this is just you having to do a little bit more work on your own. But if you're out there running team for, for 40 cents a mile split between two people and you're doing 6,000 miles a week. And let me say this to you, too. All of these companies know how badly they pay or how good they pay. Do not be deceived by that. Like a new recruiter might come on board, but within a month, they know that what they're pitching is not good money. So don't and, and when they sit, when the when the person that runs the recruiting office sits in front of the vice president or president and runs over their numbers for the month. They know the problems they have keeping and retaining drivers and getting drivers to come on board. 
They know the lack of miles, the lack of money, the lack of good equipment. They know. It's not, it's not, see, if you think that these companies just don't know how they're paying you, they do. But it's business 101. If you don't like it, then change it. You change it. It's not their job to change it. Their job is to get you to work for as, as little as they can and keep you happy while they make their money. That's their job. Their job is not to make you happy. Their job is not to pay you the most they can pay you for the least amount of work you can do. That's not their job. And if you think it's their job, I don't know where you live. Maybe you're thinking this is, and I heard somebody say this week that uh, part of all these uh, peaceful protests, kind of like you'll keep your own doctor, these peaceful protests, that these people want to implement the commune and the social isms in our country because they want to have the companies just be, have the money that's made just distributed among all the employees. That is the most idiotic, silly, childish, take the pacifier out of your mouth to eat dinner probably I've ever heard. Because if you think that's what those terms mean, you're an idiot. And those terms mean the people, the one, the top 1%, the top one tenth of 1%, they make all the money. Everybody else gets paid very little to work to make them money. It's not what we're going to all share. I know that's what they say in the books. There is not a form of that commu or social ism anywhere in the world that does what these people are saying. Well, we're, we're going to just own the company and then split all the money between the employees. No, it doesn't work that way, Sa uh, Sally and, and, and John. It doesn't work that way. And if you're burning cities down because you think that's what's going to happen, you're an idiot. On top of the fact you're also a criminal for burning cities down. I said it. Um, Walmart is strict. Yes, they are. Walmart is very strict. Uh, Michael Ray, I think I think I hit the wrong. Yep. Walmart is very strict. If they catch you with your phone or on the phone talking, you are gone. West Breeden, Eagle Express lines. I've seen them. I haven't looked into them, Terry B. I have not looked into them. Uh, so again, get on Craigslist and look, look for, you know, Google Eagle Express jobs near me. See what they're paying. Cents per mile, miles per week. Equipment matters. Does home time matter? Do benefits matter? I don't know. If you're making 2000 a week or 1800 a week, do you need the company health care? Can you go get your own? I need to do a stream about the health care we have. I'll, I'll try and do that in the next, in the next couple of days. Because um, we, have, we have a good health care plan. We got it in place once we couldn't choose our own doctor. And I didn't want to pay the fine for not having health care. And it's worked out well. But I'm not, I'm not somebody who has, who's at the doctor a lot anyway. I'm very blessed that way. Other people need that. You know, they need that. So that's what the streams have been about this morning. I was going through this, doing this search, and I thought, you know what? I did one about a week ago. Let me do another one. Let me show you guys what I look at. All I can tell all of you folks out there that are coming into trucking, if you're believing people on, the, on YouTube that are telling you that, that for a year and a half, they didn't even know how they're going to eat that day because they didn't make a lot of money. The first thing I thought of when I watched the video was this person must be actually when I heard who they're driving for, I realized it might be true that they had leased a tractor with this company and they were making less than the company driver made, or they just didn't understand that once you get to a wall, that that wall's not moving and your pay is pretty much like every week. This is what you're getting. This is what you're making. This is what you're making. If you are that person who's that you keep hitting that wall and you expect different results, I don't know how to help you. Get your three months experience and bounce. Get three months in the seat and call another company. Go, I got three months experience. What do you pay cents per mile? How many miles per week will I get? If you start the conversation with, well, how much will I be home? Will I be home every weekend? Can I be home every night? Well, again, when, when recruiters hear that, they're going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think the dis dispatcher is going to tell you? You want to be home every weekend? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? Now, there are some companies that will do it that way for you. You know, but how, what do you want to do? Do you want to make 45, 55? Do you want to come out here? If I knew about truck driving when I was in, when I was just, just say 21 years old, even though the, the rules weren't in effect for 21 year old driver back then, let's just say 21 for interstate driving. If I had known about truck driving, I would have been in this from the get go, from the get go. Nobody told me about this business. I knew about it. I had a next door neighbor who was a trucker. It's just my, my family talked down the business. Go get a degree. Go get a real job. Go get a, a, the real job. 
most truckers make more than real job people make. Most truckers are 75,000 plus. Let's just leave it at that. The ones that have good business sense, they're 75,000 plus easily. And there's people going to work today, sitting in hours worth of traffic to get into Charlotte to make $45,000 this year. And that's all they know. Like that's all they know is the fence line of what they, what, what they've been raised with. Who's going to show you? You're going to listen to a guy on YouTube that's been a year and a half with the same company and couldn't eat. And he's telling you how bad trucking was his first year and a half. No, I made more in my first two years trucking than I made my first eight years in the military. I, I didn't see a problem, but I knew I had to get through what I was doing to get to where I was going to go in trucking. And all the people that I've talked to on coaching calls that came out here and dominated every single person that I've talked to that was like, like Sean Bipley on here, who's owned his own companies, who's had his own hustle. Once you get in the seat, if the business fits you and you like it and you find the money trail that fits what you want to do, because not now I will say not everybody would want to go to the oil field and pull crude oil like I did. You might, you might not. You might want to do it in daytime driving. I did it at night. So I wasn't like, I, you know, I, I did what I wanted to do. A lot of people wouldn't do that. When I stood on top of those tanks and looked over the mountains and saw the wolves looking down at me, you know, they're like, well, we, we've heard your name, werewolf trucker, but, you know, you're in our territory. That's a different, it was a different, that was a different type of driving because you're in the middle of nowhere. If something goes wrong, you get bit by a snake, by a rattlesnake, by a whatever. They have copperheads in Wyoming. I don't know. They have them here in North Carolina. But you get bit by a snake in one of these places because the bottom of the tanks are warm. What do you think congregates at the bottom of those tanks at night? All, all the animals that are cold-blooded. I'm telling you. But for me, I was in hog heaven, or in this case, red Viking werewolf heaven. I was in hog heaven, making great money, being left alone, wearing my onesie, you know, cashing those checks every every Friday, like clockwork. I'm not cashing them because I didn't get checks. Direct deposit. We're in the 20. We're in the we're in a good century. Leave it at that. I, all I can tell you guys is if you if you want to get into a gig that is going to pay you CDL, 18 wheel, big rig, truck driving. I look across this expanse of what's going on right now. I wouldn't want to be getting a degree right now if I was a youngster. I wouldn't want to be sitting in school running up college debt. I would even be cautious about going in the military right now if I was a youngster. Pending who gets elected in two weeks. If 45 stays in office, I would hang tight. By the way, I saw this morning that uh, Richard, uh, is, is it McChrystal? We'll just say McChrystal. I can't think of his first name. The the SEAL commander said he's voted for uh, the other party, not 45. I'm like, you got, if you go do some research about this cat, though, you'll realize how corrupt he is. Okay. The general. And I said it, general, so don't send your spooks after me. He's a very corrupt general and he's voting for the other side and he's military. And he said, America's less safe. I don't see how you can be less safe, but here's what's happening. 45 is pulling us out of all the overseas locations. He's reducing pharmaceutical prices, which the, the billionaires hate on top of losing their, their war money for all these conflicts. And they've made a lot of money in those conflicts. The bankers are still doing real well, but I don't know what's going to happen in two weeks. I'm going to be good either way because I'm in CDL 18 wheel big rig truck driving. I'm going to be good either way. And I'm pulling mission essential freight and I got no shame in my game. And for being a, a young 40, I'm feeling good. 60 real life. I'm going to get rocking and rolling. I'm going to get my Johnny nap in. I wanted to do the stream, kind of show you what I'm looking at. Miss, Miss uh, Thomas, I got your email. Let me know what day this week would work for you between six and seven or between 9.45 and 10.30, one of those two blocks of time. Give me about a day's notice and I'll make it happen, Shannon. We'll get you on, a, on an interview. I got to get the other girl up too. Uh, Greg Lancaster, what's going on? Well, the healthcare topic, I will do that, Sean. I will do the healthcare video. Uh, I'll probably have somebody else that also uses them, including us, get on and talk about his because he had uh, open heart surgery. Um, no, not open heart surgery. He had a he had a major heart attack. They didn't do open heart on him. And he had this, this program. And he's who talked talk to me about it because I was watching all these fines come up if you didn't have health care and looking at the new rates and the new deductibles. I'm like, I don't want to do this. And I found this company and it's, it's, been, it's been phenomenal. All right, well, listen, um, I am going to get rocking and rolling.
appreciate you guys being here. Please subscribe, like, comment, share the video. Share this video. There are people that are losing their lives right now, financially, emotionally, psychologically, and they don't, they don't have a plan. Get in a truck. Tell them to get in the truck. You heard it here first. I am very humbled I'm a truck driver. I'm very humbled, right? Like of all the things I could be doing, I'm very humbled I'm a truck driver because this is the gig right now. This is the gig. Is it a little bit different mindset? Absolutely. But a different mindset doesn't hurt you. A different mindset helps you succeed. Red Viking Werewolf Trucker. I am out.